Today we're going to go over some must-know items about Duluth, Minnesota. So if you're looking to make the move, you're going to want to stay tuned. You don't want to miss anything. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Cody Oakland, a real estate agent here in Duluth, Minnesota. If you're new here and interested in all things Duluth, Minnesota, be sure to hit the subscribe button. And if you guys could do me a big favor, hit the like button on this video, I would really appreciate it. I'm getting a lot of questions from you guys uh, about moving to Duluth. So if you're looking to buy or sell a home here, reach out anytime at the phone number or email on the screen below. I'd love to help you. Now let's talk uh, a little bit more about uh, Duluth, Minnesota here. So you might be looking into living here in Duluth, Minnesota and wondering what it's all about. Well, today we're gonna to talk about a ton of different things. We have a lot of topics to cover, but we're gonna really start with the outdoors here because we are in Northern Minnesota and there is a lot available to us. And a lot of it's just free and available for use. Like right now, I'm actually on one of our main trails up uh, by Hawk Ridge, kind of overlooking Lake Superior in the Lakeside neighborhood here. Take a look at this. can probably even hear some of the work going on uh, down in the neighborhood a little bit here but uh, Duluth is really interesting uh, as far as like the layout of a city and what it has available to us here because we do have over 100 parks right here in the city of Duluth and not all of them are maintained regularly um, but our big ones are and there's a number of things that are really unique to Duluth specifically that in some cases you can't even get anywhere else in the world uh, because uh, like Park Point is supposed to be the world's longest freshwater sandbar which is really cool we get a lot of people coming into town just to check that out it's supposed to be the about seven miles long and it it's got kind of two sides to it. you've got uh, you cross the the aerial lift bridge and you get into the Park Point area and uh, there's the sand beach side and then the the bay side and the you're going to see some homes over in park point and there if you go down far enough you're going to come to the main area where you've actually got the park and then further down is the kind of the airport area where there's the minnesota trail off to the side that'll bring you to the end of the point but you can actually walk along the whole sand beach side even uh, where there's homes uh, anywhere on the sand beach part is public access so there's going to be different access points like the main park itself where you can uh, bring your vehicle drive down their park and wander over to the uh, beach area sometimes they even have a lifeguard and that's all uh, like I said free access right to Lake Superior as well so you can go for a swim over there if you want and then we've got like the lake walk area that starts down in the Bayfront and Canal Park area and goes all the way for about eight miles to Brighton Beach so much fun to utilize uh, I've probably mentioned this before, but I really enjoy just kind of the main walk of whether you start at Lee Erickson Park or go down to uh, and go down to Canal Park or start in Canal Park and go down to Lee Erickson. Either way, it's a really fun walk that doesn't take long. You can bike. You'll see people walking their dogs and everything down there. So it's a really cool, fun spot. You can walk down to Lake Superior in different points. And what else we have too is the Superior Hiking Trail. And we've got about 43 miles right in Duluth. It's actually uh, a little over 300 miles. It goes all the way up to Canada. But uh, we have a, a good chunk of it right here in Duluth. And so there's gonna be different routes you can take. It actually goes through some different parks of ours as well. And if you use all those different trail routes, you can certainly travel uh, up north and use even more of the trail system. Um, so you don't have to travel far. There's a ton within an hour of here, and we'll talk more about that later as well. And because we have all these parks and trail systems, we've also started uh, creating a lot of our Duluth Traverse system. And so they're connecting a lot of different neighborhoods, and it's really cool. Um, it, it's meant for biking. You can hike on them as well, but it's really, really cool for mountain biking. We're one of only a handful of places in the whole world that have uh, the gold star rating from the association uh, because of the trail system, the, the size of it, the style and everything. So it's really cool. We get a lot of people even visiting just for biking and it's really cool. And as you can see, obviously, if you're looking into uh, Duluth, Minnesota, you're probably thinking about Lake Superior, which you can see right behind me here. And Lake Superior does a number of things for us, uh, 
it's big not only because of uh, being able to use Lake Superior and the water it provides, but a big deal of it is going to be the weather. And it makes the weather uh, really interesting here. It's fairly unpredictable for some things, like rain. Uh, if, if they're predicting rain, you might not even know until it's supposed to rain that particular hour. <laughs> so it's kind of hard to predict. You gotta sometimes carry around different uh, sets of clothing. So it's kind of difficult on that, but it is something that provides a lot of protection against like tornadoes. So it makes the news when we even get a funnel here. Um, doesn't mean they can't happen, but uh, it does provide a lot of protection against uh, having tornadoes here. And it's also one of the reasons we do get uh, a little bit more snow than other areas of Minnesota is because of our proximity right here to Lake Superior and it affects the weather a little different in certain parts of town where some areas will get more snow than others. Uh, it's not usually a huge dif difference, but um, usually it's gonna be you know within a couple inches, but sometimes it can be a little bit bigger than that as far as uh you know some areas might not even get snow the further away from the lake you get compared to being in here or it might melt a little uh faster the closer you are to the lake so it keeps it really interesting uh living next to lake superior and it's really cool obviously you can see we get great views because of it um but some other outdoor stuff that's available to us are the lakes we have here and not just lake superior but we have a lot of lakes available to us that are a lot of them in our free public access so they're going to have a boat landing or a little beach you can go to uh, that's going to be free uh, there are going to be private areas that are only for homeowners but we do have a lot of access to lakes so if you like fishing swimming just boating around we have a ton of that uh, we do have rivers here which can be fun especially uh, i like to kayak more on rivers than the lakes and we have a lot of public land available to utilize here. Uh, so not just your, your standard parks, but there's a lot of state land you can use, whether you like to hunt, uh, just go uh, ATVing, um, or just hiking around. There's a lot available to us. And one more thing I wanna have everybody uh, keep in mind is we also have a place called Spirit Mountain. So if you like to snowboard, ski, anything like that, we do have a place right here in Duluth and then we've got other places close by or within a couple hours that you can visit too. But right here in Duluth, we do have Spirit Mountain. So in the winter, you can keep busy doing that as well. Something else we need to talk about is the options we have here in Duluth. And for a city this size, we actually have quite a bit here. Uh, I just want to touch on a, a couple main points uh, that come up all the time. And if you're looking to live here, we do have a, a lot indoors as well uh, for a place the size of Duluth, we have a big convention center, the, the deck, and that's where they do a ton of bigger events. So you'll see uh, comedy acts, uh, fairly big ones like Tom Segura, we have Burt Kreischer coming up. They do uh, some big music concerts there. And we do like our big home and builders show. So there's, there's different e events that are put on there. Uh, so that's a lot of fun. We've got the movie theater down there, one of them. And then the Amsoil Arena. So if you like uh, hockey at all, we do have our uh, UMD Bulldog team that plays there all the time in different events there as well. So there, there's a lot going on for the some of the, the bigger stuff because um, we're, we're typically known for a lot of the outdoor activities we do here, especially when it's nice out. But we do have indoor stuff available as well. And a lot of smaller like clubs and uh, there's a big art scene here as well. So it just depends on kind of what your hobbies are and we can definitely take a look into that so reach out anytime if you're kind of wondering what's available to us here and stores we do have a really good retail selection uh, for a place this size and like we just got uh, an Ashley furniture built uh, Costco was one of the the big topics for a while and uh, I didn't even use Costco before because we didn't have anything here like that other than Sam's Club and now we go to Costco all the time it's awesome and so we got all the big ones like Walmart, Target. Uh, we got our main Miller Hill Mall area where it's kind of the, the main retail spot above the Duluth Hill. And Menards, Home Depot, Fleet Farm, all that stuff. So we've got a ton of small independent places as well. So if you're looking for anything, you don't necessarily have to order it online or travel to get something. We do have quite a selection here. And Duluth is really interesting in that um, Maybe you're looking to get out of town if you've been here a while and get out on a weekend adventure 
or maybe you just want to shop somewhere like the Twin Cities because they have uh, maybe a larger selection of certain things. You don't have to travel far to really get to some of these other places. So there's quite a bit within two to three hours. So you got the Twin Cities, that's two to three hours away depending on you know where you're going there. Up north, you've got kind of Lutzen and Grand Marais that are about two hours away. Uh, if you're, you're driving there and you want to maybe go skiing or maybe you're gonna go up to the Boundary Waters. So you can uh, certainly uh, get outside of Duluth and maybe you're just looking to hike more. Within an hour, we have even more lakes and trails. So it's really cool um, and really uh, an interesting location for a city because we're really the hub of the Northland. And uh, another question I get asked about a lot is the internet. And Duluth is really cool uh, as far as options uh, because we do have high speed internet here, <laughs> even though we are in Northern Minnesota. So we have high speed internet, certainly right in the city of Duluth. And we have it uh, in the rural properties as well, but you really gotta double check uh, what speeds are available depending you know, how far out you are in the country. So if you're looking for a country home, we have to definitely double check certain things uh, as far as speeds and if it's available because certain um, places really far out might not have high speed internet. But uh, we do have internet available. There's a couple different companies depending on if you're in the city of Duluth or Maybe you're over in Hermantown or out in the country. There's a couple different places that'll provide internet depending on where you are. So we can definitely have that talk too. And I always tell everybody to verify that property to property depending on where we're looking. So we'll definitely keep an eye on that uh, in your home search. All right, the next topic I really wanna discuss uh, because it comes up all the time, even though we talked a little bit about the outdoors, right now I wanna really go into depth on the seasons we have here because this comes up for everybody and it's a big, topic uh, especially if you're coming from a place with a more moderate climate or where it's nice more often than not and uh, Duluth might not be the place for you if you don't like any winter because we do have the four distinct seasons but it is a great place because the having four distinct seasons really changes um, what you can do throughout the year uh, provides a whole different experience look feel so it just kind of depends on what you're looking for like springtime you know the leaves are still going to be gone until they we get closer to uh, uh, summertime so everything's going to be growing in it's going to be a little muddier which can be a lot of fun if you're looking to you know ride around on your atv or something like that and so you can still see through everything like right now uh, we, we're in fall time but you know because all the leaves are gone you can see through more So sometimes you can get a view of the, the lake in certain spots where it wasn't there before. And as we, and there's still less bugs. And as we get into summertime, there might be more bugs. Everything's gonna be growing in, it looks great, but the weather's gonna be warmer. So we're, a lot of us are gonna be out at the lakes or roaming around a lot more, hiking and you know fishing, swimming, all that stuff. So there's a lot going on. We have a ton of outdoor activities when it's nice out. Even concerts we'll do down in Bayfront here locally uh, outside and that can be a lot of fun um, so we'll do all sorts of stuff like that and as you get into fall time I, it's one of my favorite times because the weather starts to cool off a little bit it gets a little wild though uh, because you will have like randomly really nice days in fall time and the the leaves will start changing color and it looks great one of my favorite routes to do uh, just driving around is just taking a uh, going over by Brighton Beach, going up the North Shore Scenic Route and going up to Two Harbors for a quick drive uh, right along Lake Superior there. So that's a really cool uh, drive and you can, a lot of people will go over there and run around and everything because you have bigger shoulders on the road. So you can get a really cool view. And then as we get into winter, this is one of the, the more uh, common questions I do get uh, is what's, what's available here to us. And we actually have quite a bit. So if you enjoy anything in winter, uh, there's gonna be quite a selection because we do have Spirit Mountain locally, like we were talking, for uh, skiing, snowboarding, um, they do have a tubing hill, uh, which can be a lot of fun. But uh, there's also gonna be lots of cross-country skiing areas, uh, fat tire biking has gotten really big, there's gonna be snowshoeing, they even have a dog sledding uh, area here, a um, couple places off for that for for activities and then there's ice fishing uh, so as the lakes freeze over you'll see a ton of people out there ice fishing 
Uh, we've got some rinks for skating. Um, so pretty much anything you can do in winter. I, I really enjoy uh, snowmobiling when I get the opportunity to go out. Um, it could be a lot of fun to go <laughs> and tear up the, the lake areas, um, especially after a fresh snow. So that could be a lot of fun. Every winter is a little different though. Um, you're gonna probably start to see the snow stick around more and the colder temperatures stick around more kind of mid-November usually But every year is a little different But that's usually when you, you start to see the winter like stuff set in a little bit more Even though it doesn't technically start until the end of December And so you'll start to see the the real big winter months are gonna be January and February where you typically hear about the colder temperatures and we get more snow then and So every year is a little different for how many cold days we get and everything and how much snow um, but because we are next to Lake Superior, we do tend to get more snow like we were talking uh, earlier in the video uh, because we're next to Lake Superior. But it is a really cool area and looks really awesome. It just depends on if you're looking to be in an area where we do have four distinct seasons. Um, because uh, if you're coming from an area where it's a little uh, nicer more often than not like we were talking, uh, maybe you're going to have to uh, figure out winter driving a little bit and maybe you're gonna have to purchase more uh, more clothes to deal with the the changing uh, climate uh, throughout the whole year so it, it'll just depend on what you're looking for but it can be really cool having four distinct seasons I also want to mention uh, the fact that we have two main hospitals here and that's that's pretty unique for a city this size we have st. Luke's and Essentia and Essentia is actually spending a, about a billion dollars on a new facility and upgrading some other ones uh, as well uh, right downtown and it's looking amazing they're not finished <laughs> yet but it, it's gonna be awesome and so we have a ton of services they provide here as always you know check to make sure what services they provide if there's anything you need specifically but uh, the reason that's also really unique is that uh, in smaller areas while they may have a clinic or something the services are fairly limited so you might end up uh, if you're not in Duluth driving all the way to Duluth anyway uh, to get certain care um, so that's that's kind of the interesting aspect to uh, having Duluth here with two hospitals is we can offer quite a bit because of that all right the last item I want to mention today is the fact that we do have a regional airport which can be really useful uh, you might not use it every time you want to fly out because uh, a lot of the flights uh, the main area is gonna be it brings you to the Minneapolis area to go to other locations uh, it does have a few direct flights um, but it, it's really handy to have, especially in uh, winter if you want to fly out anywhere. It's, it may not always be the cheapest option, um, but it is really convenient. <laughs> so you don't always have to make uh, the drive down to the Twin Cities and you know either uh, maybe you're going to stay at a, a hotel, uh, which is often what we do. We'll either drive down and pay for the uh, airport parking or pay for a hotel and uh, leave the car there. Um, uh, for our vacation stay so it really just depends on what's gonna work for you but we do have the regional airport here uh, available for for everybody well there you go there's a little bit of information about Duluth Minnesota if you like this video hit the thumbs up button leave a comment share it with a friend and be sure to subscribe to my channel I post new videos about Duluth Minnesota every week and as always if you're looking to buy or sell a home here in the Duluth area reach out anytime at the phone number or email on the screen below I'd love to help you